Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 452. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, um, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Tim is um, webmaster of onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. Um, Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he is based. Uh, in London, um, in the suburb of Wimbledon. Uh, Masataki is also a Google product expert in the um, AdSense community. And Andy Wigglesworth um, is, is uh, with us. I hope, I hope he stays for a while, a long time. Um, and uh, Andy is. Uh, uh, the founder and um, digital director of Riverside Digital in Doncaster. And David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He is in, based in Brighton. Um, uh, yeah, Brighton, the sunny south of the East. Almost Bridge. Brighton, yes. Who are today? Little Hampton. Yeah. Okay, well, let's um, check out our, our first uh, question. Uh, let me see. What am I looking for? Oh, I, I know what I'm looking for. That one. Uh, it's from Emma K. Uh, it's titled Trying to Differentiate H1s. Um, Emma goes on to write uh, H1s. Uh, Trying to differentiate each one's when a website uses the same subpage structuring and names over and over again. In the scenario of a property website where there are multiple properties for sale, and under each property there are subpages for that property, such as overview, land for sale, FAQs, gallery, etc. How would you differentiate your each ones for each of these subpages? Um, for example, property A and property B will have uh, all of these um, subpages, and each of the H1s for the pages are overview. Um, land for sale, FAQs, gallery, etc. This then means that there are multiple pages on the website um, with the same exact uh, same H1s, uh, i.e. overview and overview. Uh, if I were to make the name of the property, the H1, i.e. property A, we would still run into this same problem. I'm also avoiding having to use long convoluted H1s such as property A, land for sales to resolve this issue. What do I do here? Any thoughts or appreciations? I keep running into websites built like this and I'm unsure of the best practice. Well, firstly, I think you're sort of misconstruing two things here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> H1s are generally style tags. Okay. And they've been, you know, put into an SEO context over the years. Right. So if you've got your H1 saying uh, uh, property A, right, and that's your thing right that's your your page it lands on it property a now if your other little in the section of pages like just like I, i'm guessing your thing kind of looks like um just any normal product page on any e-com site faqs property overview like any like any of these things if those little subheadings of yours are also in an h1 and it's the same size as your thing i would probably just style it out just in your CSS, style it out. So your H1's larger, and then you could be using those as a functional thing. So, 
your your FAQs would be in an H3, for example, right? And then you're taking it back into an SEO context where things should be structured with an H1 tag. Well, actually, they doesn't have to always work like that. Google kind of understands what's going on. You look at any Amazon page, there's like about 4 million H1s on that thing, right? So the point being here is, you know, you, you, you've got to look at it in the actual context of what the H1 was originally, and then it's quite easy to fix. Just style your H tags so that you can actually use them in a structure, in an SEO structure. If I think that's what she was saying or asking. Brilliant, Tim. Yeah, it's um, is it HTML, HTML5. You've been able to use as many H1s as you wish on a page, which is probably why our our friends at Amazon get away with it, apart from being Amazon, of course. But otherwise, Tim speaks lots of wisdom. He even surprises himself some days. <laughs> all right let's go this, to... this is why this is why look see i am google i'm googly i'm googly <laughs> Stop okay. <laughs> question two was um titled pillars and clusters uh from mahmoud fabi um and Mahmoud said, should I create um, one long blog post or divide it into pillars and clusters? Well, um, Mohammed, um, I'm just, just, just jumping in there quickly, David. Um, it's funny how all these are coming along and we have this new uh, helpful content update coming along. So the helpful update should help you decide to make this decision it'll be very interesting to see what happens in terms of uh, long blog posts with this uh, with this update um, because the average um, the average length of a um, of a page um, in the first 10 um, of the SERPs is something like 2200 words if i remember correctly so um yeah it'd be interesting to see whether uh length still plays that amount of uh of importance uh in in, in blog posts but um yeah i i guess the the thing is what you need to you need to think about what what you're creating for your your readers um but you also need to have a look at what are you actually trying to rank for and what are, what are you up against? If you're up against whacking great long um, blog posts um, and pages um, for your main key phrases, then uh, the bad news is that you're probably going to have to write um, as much as them as well as them uh, to get any ranking. No. Uh, this is this is this is the, the this is the thing that sometimes and I think Google's already doing quite a good job in the sense of figuring out uh, longer content, longer form content as to shorter, sharper, snappier, updated bits on the site. Um, and I think that goes back to the intent and, and things like this, which I think this useful content update is is, is going to, well, we don't quite know yet. Apparently, it's already rolling. I haven't seen anything happening. Or if it is rolling, then... Tim, for, for, Tim, for those who have been under a rock for the last three years, what, what's this next update? Because I'm, I'm a bit not aware of it. Uh, uh, yeah, so... Google, funny enough, actually warned people, actually put a blog post out saying we are doing, uh, we are we are going to be rolling out a, a, a new algo. It's going to be in real time, constant basically, called the updated or, no, sorry, helpful content update, right? And essentially what it is, uh, in a nutshell, is it's going to 
they want to see content that a user is going to find helpful and not just content created for an SEO benefit. Now, they've never published an update or saying that they're going to create an update or an algo before. It's always been after where they've just kind of gone, yeah, this was a this, this was a that, this was a like even off the panda and stuff, you know, you know. This was a warn, this was like, a, it just, it just weird um, that they actually put it out the week sort of before or when they started rolling it out. Um, and I think they expect to see big shifts if they did that. I think they, they like preempting, they're going to have a pit, like a, a document there when people start screaming in the webmaster forums and shit where they can go, mm, see link. Just, do you know what I mean? I'm like, mm -hmm um and so like if it's uh, but we haven't had a timeline we haven't had an update i've seen a few things on social today going anyone seen any shift i haven't seen nothing yet happening yet but the way i read the article it's it's coming uh, it didn't say they were rolling but who knows um but um you know i have different sites so um, I've got some health sites which are also coupled in with the whole um, your money or your life scenario, right? Where longer content, more in depth, does well. But I've got some other sites where quicker, shorter, for, like, yes, you do have the longer form stuff, but quicker, shorter, down and dirty stuff where you lump in different products um, uh, uh, to showcase them into a quick thing, in, into, into a quick thing, they seem to do really, really well. Not necessarily in terms of the traffic wise, but in SERPs. And when someone does click through to it, so it's not massive traffic, but when someone does click through to it, they move through to the rest of the site um if they find it useful uh, in that sense so that I don't, yeah um, there's helpful things going to be interesting to figure out what google wants to see the point here is also for muhammad the whole point there is it says it's for your users and not for seo so i think when you just say long form or split it up that's too simplified just for us to give you an answer on that um firstly we need to see how things are working in each industry when this rolls out but number two it would be handy to see what site it is because we could then go oh shit, hey this you, you, this is a finance this is in finance right you need to be super you know this needs to be super down the line with finance or medical or something like that but then on the other flip side, this could be a cartoon thing, right? Like about cartoons or Marvel comics. And in that instance, it could be quicker and better to have snippet posts like split into where it just answers the question on like, oh, Jesus, I was just about to say, which is the best Marvel or DC? Now, now that probably would need a long form, right? But like something on a particular character in a particular episode and it's a short form shit and that would probably be seen as more useful than it finding it in the long form so so that it's not as clear cut an answer i think at the minute no no it isn't no, i agree with you on that but one of the interesting things that's pointed out to me is that um they are saying that um that if you have um low quality um unhelpful no unhelpful is the uh, the terminology this week isn't it unhelpful content on your site that can bring the whole lot down the whole lot of serps down um they are trying they appear to be trying to get us to clean up our sites to get rid of any unhelpful uh content and i think that if this um if this update does have a big effect and we'll find out over the coming weeks then um looking looking at uh the the the, the content on on our sites 
and I mean that's everyone's sites, not just us five, uh, on our sites. Um, dispassionately, it's going to be a, um, a fairly urgent uh, undertaking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've also seen that apparently it's meant to be just real time. So if you do get pinged, if you fix it, you don't have, it's not like a core update. You don't have to wait three, four months for it to rerun before you it'll apparently if you fix your crap you will see automatic results to fixing the crap because it's a constant algo that's running i mean here's the first thing it's like so so this is the first paragraph uh, of the uh, of the thing it's google search is always working to better connect people to helpful information to this end, we're launching what we're calling the helpful content update. That's part of a broader effort to ensure people see more original, helpful content written by people for people in search results. Now that's another thing. Could they be starting to hit out at AI content? which has just been churned out. I mean, there are some news news outlets out there which whack out AI content, two, three hundred articles a day. Yeah, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carry on, Master. Uh, picking up on what's been said, it's really interesting that the document does encourage people to remove, quote, unhelpful, content unquote and <laughs> i'm sure we're going to see a lot of people trying to be a good you know tree surgeon and try to prune things and then ending up killing the tree because i have a feeling that a lot of people will become overzealous and remove stuff that they really shouldn't remove Yes, I, I'm thinking about having a, a page uh, made up as WordPress surgeon. You think we can uh, make a uh, make a business out of that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, um, I mean, as a matter of course, before this even came out, I'm on my sort of annual at the minute over the last two months. I'm on my annual run through content that has been created over the years uh, on, on client sites. Um, have a quick look at it and then just bin it or not. Um, and, you know, to be fair, I've, I've, I've been t not as much as I was expecting to. Um, and then the, how, people say, "Well, how do you how do you look at what's worth binning or not?" And it's just a quick for me. And this is before this even came out. It's first off, I'm looking at where th this piece of content is meant to be fitting itself within the greater scheme of things. Um, sometimes. Uh, it can be very ambiguous on the actual title of it or and then even the first and i'll just do a quick and i'm like yeah that's a bit weird that 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 title of this thing is it's just it's not going to do anything for anyone it's never going to appear um and then i'll do a quick cr cross reference with analytics and then analytics will show me the time it was published you know when it featured actually in 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 you know recent articles people did follow through to it and then it's just never ever appeared again because it's been buried in it's such an ambiguous title to it the that you know of the content that it was just never surfaced for a user that was actually looking for that content and then my next question is is should i just remove that now um and then re-look at because it's a good piece of content and then just relook and republish uh, with with a better title to it and 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 internal and and it should do better. And then I just save and then I just unpublish it. So it's four hundred four, but I just unpublish it. And then I look at other bits and go, yeah, that is just nowhere even relevant now. Like yesterday, I think I was going through one. It was the 
um, I came across uh, uh, at gyms, and each year they do a quick sum up of the year past. And I was like, I came across this one. I went, oh shit, how many of these done? And, and then I like just you know use the search feed. Oh my man, they've done one since, since obviously pre COVID. So like they're like 2018, 2017, 2016, and then I was like, yeah, that's just that's just that's just it. it, it that's old news. No one's ever going to land on it. No one. Yes, it's nice at the year, but at that point, it's just not even useful anymore. And then that's like ten things just deleted straight away. Four or four, not even bother with it. Um. So yeah, I think like must. I think people. Yeah, people are going to have to get quite good at um, actually looking at a piece of content now and deciding is, is that useful or not. Um but i think some people are just going to go mental if this site suffers from something they could definitely uh over prune kill it burn it to the ground and yeah, they're going to take out a chainsaw <laughs> um but apparently it's um been released today well that's according to the um updates and it's going to take two weeks so you know, it probably is prudent to wait two weeks to see. Ah, so it's it's going out today, yeah? They start to roll it. Yeah, according to the um, ranking updates page, it's dated today, 25th August, and it says the rollout could take up to two weeks to complete. Okay. So. Well, there we have it. Ooh. Will either see shit go crazy or yeah, yeah? But I think the indications are that it's going to be you know, pretty big. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. If these guys actually put a, like a, a two week, like a three week, you know, uh, a blog post on this on an update, um the way i see it is they're anticipating there's going to be a big shake-up and they literally want this documented so that when the when you know in the forums or whatever people can just go there's a link people can send it to clients or or whatever when 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 everything starts crashing yeah i think it's going to go hard on um what you might call soft fake news um if you look at the document you know it says um avoid creating content of search engines first and the last few bullet points really suggest that you know things that have uh, been tolerated thus far i think will not and they're looking for expertise in all aspects and all areas that smacks to me the of um affiliate site yeah like there's a one did you decide to enter niche topic areas without any real expertise but instead mainly because you thought you'd get search traffic yeah that's mm -hmm. where end at affiliate sites um and there's one you know this sort of the last one sort of uh, the sort of really you know what i meant by sort of soft, soft fake news or fluff articles sort of speculative yeah. things you know does your content promise to answer a question that actually has no answer such as suggesting there's a release date for a product movie or tv show when one isn't confirmed you know people write all sorts of speculative things you know <laughs> um what do you mean about google updates like that yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yes yeah, some people would get in trouble for that yes <laughs> and are you using extensive automation to produce content on many topics that's interesting it's a many topics does it's like could i use ai on just a single topic mm. Mm. this is the, the problem is when they put stuff out like this the, the the questions are just so broad, aren't they? You, you can overanalyze it, can't you? Mm. Um, mm. They've they've probably not spent a great deal of time 
putting this together so you know how how but you see with any with anything what you know with anything they've done a test somewhere they will have run tests they don't just launch mm. you know they would have done tests they would have analyzed the results they got did were they better were they worse they would have had all of their little secret squirrel helpers analyze search results based on that did they find it better they would have run this they would have been doing this for 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 no end of months um and they feel that they've got the balance right that will now produce a better set of search results and now it's going to roll out to the rest of everything where the tests were or weren't run and that's going to be the real Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting from sort of AdSense perspective, because a lot of these things would apply to um, many sites that we see in the AdSense community. I mean, it's sort of commentary or news, which essentially are very much derivative of news reports or other people's opinion pieces. Um, so they will go. And one thing that's, that stands out for me quite a bit is, are you writing about things simply because they seem trending and not because you'd write about them otherwise for your existing audience? So that seems to suggest you know, about stability of your site and your relationship. The audience yeah interestingly there was there was a um a spot of a tweet thread where someone had asked jesus john Mueller, yes the patience of a saint actually um tw uh, tagged him in and said my my sister I think my sister, my sister runs uh, or, or, or runs a, you know, works on works in the health market. I work in, was it automotive or something like that? Um, is it okay if we publish both on the same site? And John was like, yeah, uh, automotive and health, those are like two, like those are just so far apart. We would probably see that as suspect. Yeah. Mm. And it's going to be interesting how, you know, going back to Tim's point earlier about the search as intent and if you like the search as proficiency in things, you know, are they looking for specialized information or are they looking for a quick answer to something? And going back to the question, sort of, you know, should you have a long format content or short? In a sense that it may really well depend on the search engine. Because some people may prefer to read long pieces, you know, get comprehensive answers to questions that they have. You know, they don't mind reading a dense academic article, shall we say. On the other hand, you may have other people who simply want a quick answer, a simple answer. To their question and if you're signed in to your google account and conducting search all the time hmm. it also depends on what what the search is about isn't it because i might want a very long and complex answer if i was going to buy an ev say um whereas if i I want to find somewhere where I can buy a set of screwdrivers locally, um, then I certainly don't want a history of screwdrivers. Yeah, but let's say I want, um, well, you know, if you want to look for best EVs, mm. you might be the kind of person who wants to have an exhaustive comparison, you know, listing all the different models, what are the, you know, the um, advantages and disadvantages of each. And so, so forth. Or you may be a kind of person who 
who just wants a simple answer. This is the best EV. So or someone who, who trusts Jeremy Clarkson, say. <laughs> Would you trust him with EVs? Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, but that's, you know, yeah, that, that's true too. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, it's it can be down to to one's character. Yeah, because I mean, it's really impressionistic, right? I really don't know, but I do quite a lot of search, and I use. You know, and I sometimes specify um, academic domains uh, or PDF because it's better, you know, and get a long format answer to what I'm looking to, who I'm looking for. And I'm starting to see more of that appear on my search, sort of general search. And then it's quite a bit different if I open an incognito window and do the same search again it's just you know anecdote really but it does seem as if google does associate me with looking for certain types of um results I think so, I think this has perhaps been the longest question um, we've, we've ever done. Yeah, I think so. So, in a sense, that I think going back to the, in a sense, question, it really depends who you are as the content creator and what audience do you are you're targeting. You know, you might be the kind of person who writes long format articles for people who want that kind of content or that kind of answer if that's the case i think you know stick with long format and dare i say but will we move on to the next Yes, quick before one of us says something else. <laughs> All right, before I move on, I, I must um, uh, compliment uh, Dee Robinson um, and also all, all, all of the other people who uh, devote time and, and uh, resources to uh, answering questions through the week um, on, on the WCA Questions Facebook group. All right. Um, moving right along, we are now on question three on our run list um, from Abdullah Ubaki, uh, and it's titled, Is This the Right Thing to Do? Um, particularly if you ask, have to ask, um, it's not. Um, uh, Abdullah said, uh, Hi everyone, I want to restructure my website in terms of links to include categories and reduce a number of words on it for, for better indexing. Uh, is this the right thing to do? Any uh, advice? See Michael Martin is there is um, he, he he would um, uh, answer probably most most questions on the uh, um, WSEO questions Facebook group. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not quite sure. So, okay, I want to restructure my website. In terms of links to include categories and reduce number of words on it for better indexing, <sighs> right. Reducing the number of words is not going to make any difference to indexing. That that that's sure. I'm sure Google has some stupidly massive amount of content that can be on your like before you know. Yeah, I just yeah. Um, you're reducing the number of words is not going to make an issue. 
definitely you maybe want to restructure in terms of how you're presenting it in the, the site and how sort of if a Google bot see now Google doesn't always come to your home page, you know, they're always coming to different pages. So potentially looking at your menu and looking at how if you've got a shed load of different things, potentially looking at your top line navigation and your menu on how a user or a robot if it lands on that page how it would travel through and is it easy for them to actually get to the bottom of all your content relating to whatever it be a category a product a service or whatever um yeah sure you know that that can make sense uh, restructuring your navigation um but in terms of words, I'm not entirely sure uh, that that doesn't matter. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I was going to stop, stop talking. Um, yeah, the the um, I do wonder at questions like this um, generally whether this has got the words. Will I get an easy win if I do the following? Um, and probably not. Um, your, if you have a, a small website, it probably won't. You probably won't get very much more leverage through recategorizing it um, and restructuring it and setting up setting up categories. I already said recategorize. Um, so that's not going to be uh that's not going to be worthwhile probably um if you've got a very big website and you think that you're you're realistically going to get some more value out of it then um you should embark upon this very carefully so you don't mess it up but i do wonder whether this is one of these ideas that you can get a quick win by doing some of these things in which case i don't think so okay we exhausted this one we've run it up and down and it's fallen to the floor all right let's um rock on to number four it's um from brett nelson titled creating physical silos brett said hello he said my wordpress site currently has a flat architecture and we're considering changing to here article uh, to create uh, excuse me physical silos that better organize the site for users and googlebot and this would change the urls of the majority of pages i.e www.website dot com slash facebook hyphen ads uh, might look something like www.website.com slash digital marketing slash um, facebook ads afterwards um, with other pages also falling under the uh, digital marketing category are there any SEO concerns, search engine optimization concerns, um, I should have in making these types of changes? Or uh, do I um, not need to worry uh, as long as I correctly 301 redirect and upload an updated sitemap? Don't rely on a sitemap to save you. <clears throat> Okay, Michael Martin has answered another one. Yeah, I mean, so long as you correctly redirect the URIs, then you'd be fine. Um, what I would question is that it's going to make it better for users and Googlebot. I didn't think it will. It would make sense for you as someone who has to manage the website. But as far as the user is concerned, you know, unless, you, unless that's going to change on how things are presented on your website, they're not going to notice, right? And 
Googlebot really want to care either. No. You know, the thing is, you say it's a flat architecture, but, you know, you've probably still got a top line called digital marketing. And you still have a menu, drop down menu underneath that with Facebook ads, with da da da, with da da da. You, it's not a flat architecture. Yes, they are single pages, but and and it's not in, it's not, but it's not flat architecture in that sense because you are still presenting everything. Um, I have actually seen sites where we've done this. And it has not gone well because they've been in existence with that particular structure for a long time. You must remember it's in a navigation, you're interlinking everything because you, you know, you have different things. You're interlinking that Facebook ads, I'll go back into, you know, uh, on your page. And then it says, uh, check out our other service on Twitter ads or whatever. And you, you're all interlinking those those, those those things, which you would do anyway with a, with, yeah. with, a, with with a different architecture anyway, right? Because that makes sense. Um, and it and it has not worked out uh, for the better. In some cases, we have reversed it after a few months, and we've turned back to. Um, uh, so you know, if you were starting out like that. I would say, you know, do it from day one. But if you are doing that and, you know, I don't, yeah, I, I from my own experience, I personally wouldn't piss about now. I agree with Tim. I had a bad experience with creating a, a fake middle page to create structure and it, it indexed all the middle pages and it wouldn't serve the end page no matter what we did. It was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. Um, and we had to, like Tim, we had to revert back. Um, and then we had to just mess around with canonical oils and all sorts of weird and wonderful ways to get it back working again. Yeah, I, I'm not generally not a, a fan of doing things unless you have to, because there's always, um, and by doing things, I mean making changes unless you have to, because there's always a chance that something will go wrong um murphy's law applies to websites as to everything else in life mm. yeah, it's a question really, if it ain't broke don't fix it i mean um and if it yeah. is broke get the seo in <laughs> yeah so i think i think it just makes sense to think over again you know what exactly you're trying to achieve by doing this because you know you might be just doing something a bit risky for no reward yeah the funny thing is you know andy even on on on, on my site for example i thought um when we were putting in those new putting in new pages on um mm, oh yeah putting in new pages on optimizing google my business and yeah. optimizing for local I went, I, I went then, then again, I nested it again, and you know, those things are just not happening. They're just not yeah. fucking doing nothing. And that was a new new section on my site, and it's still not happening. It just, for some reason, it's, yeah. Okay, let's go to number five on our run list it's from um, juan delise jr um it's titled when when they want to do a guest post on your site um, and juan goes on to say what does it mean when a marketer wants to do a guest post on your site uh, what do they intend to get out of it are they planning to get paid for it i.e selling their writing skills or are they using it to link uh, to other sites or link from other sites i think you mean um should you be happy if if many uh, people want to do guest posts on your site or is it more of a bother and uh, uh, just like spam so put it this way yeah you, you don't want to do that don't do guest posts on your site don't sell it don't do it just tell them to take a you know if they especially if they want a link um 
if you're doing a collaboration with another company that works well, whatever, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and you can both do it, you know, together or something. But essentially, they just want to link out of you. Um, and nine times out of ten, they're just going to like, you know, in the old days, I, I thought, uh, you know, sometimes my clients will go, can you take a look? They'll, they'll also get these emails. They'll send you the thing. They'll show you the, you look at the content to go, that is seriously bad. It's crap. Well, we're not publishing that. Forget it. Um, so, yeah, don't do it. They just want to link out of you. Um, but on the flip side, you must now realize, it, take it as a little bit of a, you know, well, hey, I'm actually doing something right because these buggers are finding you. They're finding you in the search results. They're liking your stuff, yeah, um, and they, they're finding you and they think, you know, you'll be a nice little juicy thing to get a link from. So take that as a pat on the back. Just don't give them the link. Yeah. I think there's a there's another um, there's another dimension to this. Um, the useful content update that we've been talking about today. Uh, do you want a load of old crap that someone is suggesting they they want to put on your website? On your website, it could poison your entire website if uh, if you read what Google says in a particular way so i would uh i would keep it well away from my site if i were you mm. okay let's move to number six our sixth and final question this week um how do i do the seo thing is the title i love that and that's from liz holcraft she said i am new to this as in i i started researching uh, search engine optimization 12 hours ago new uh -huh. i have created a website but the purpose of the website is to be a directory no sales purely a site to help people find other sites relating to a topic no sales and no articles how do i do this the seo thing thanks oh my god uh so 12 hours versus 12 years and i still don't exactly know what i'm doing um <laughs> yeah you know what directory that ship has sailed off 20 years ago i think you know like yeah let's look at like oh man even uh, yell that i think they they had they they they, they were on their the bones of their ass they're a directory yell yelp um you know they're on the they're, they're finding it difficult uh yellow pages they still going because they branched down into actually selling people pipe dreams and um, making really, really bad websites to uninformed um, businesses. Um, so they've had to branch out into that because their directory is just worth crap now. Um, look, um, if you want to go down the road, I've always said people, you know, to go and do it go and do it if people go yeah you know that should yeah it's a terrible idea because the market's saturated yeah sure but you know what i still toy with creating little directories here you know uh, not for money but you know just to help local users in the area with particular finding particular things um that i vetted you know what i mean like choose this plumber he's all right uh, you know that cake shop does really good cakes uh, but that's more of a self-interest not for anything and just to help help out the general you know searching public to make money on it you know you really have to uh, you know it's going to be tricky so tricky now um jesus well just say no sales on this so um, uh, you're right this is not not an issue 
Yeah, it's so tricky. Because you know what the biggest thing is firstly attracting people to use it. So I've toyed with, with like doing doing like the first year kind of free, but they still need to, you know, do their billing details. Obviously, you have to have come up with something because you're competing against all the other big ones who are on the bones of their asses. Um so you would need to attract them firstly how are you going to make something slightly different to this uh to to all the others and especially with these new updates with google right um you obviously have a cms where they can fill in their business details uh or their or, or their details their offering or whatever the case may be um I would sort of get a developer um, to put in things like little big, massive, like little asterixy jobs saying, do not copy and paste off your website. This needs to be unique. Introductory, minimum, I don't know, 250 words, and then an actual paragraph. But give them like, like little helpful what to write things. Um, potentially do a link up with copyscape they may have some kind of plugin where they once the person submitted it it will just go through and say no nah, they just literally copied the shit um and then you just email them and go that's not going live because you just copied it you just this is not original you know and original shit is not going to help you get found in search um then how else can you make it better um i guess you could stay social profiles you could do some kind of thing where you take the first couple of just display the first few snippets from their social profile like their last two tweets their last two facebook posts you know um it's just trying to add value to it and that's the problem it's like how do you add value to something that they literally already have if they've got a website if they've got social if they've got you know uh, if they're part of if they're on linkedin if they're part of um some online community for that specific thing and they're using their business name they've got a profile out there how, how do you make it unique to you and that's the big 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 thing build it and they will come is just it doesn't happen it needs to you know it needs to add value to a already very very congested um market yeah okay all of that <laughs> yeah i think the difficulty is that in how do you stand out and the only way I can see is what Tim suggested, is you know, creating a curated directory based on your own specialism, own knowledge, on your direct knowledge of something. You know, that is valuable. But of course, then the market's going to be quite small. Is that sufficient really to make it a going concern? Hmm. So, yeah i think it's, it's it's difficult because i don't think you can create something that's easily scalable because that's been done and that's and you're not going to dislodge the yells and yelps of the world yeah it's, it's just a tricky one man um You need to somehow try and add value. Uh, the other, the other flip side, which is also going to be interesting, which I've just been thinking um, with this uh, useful content, and don't go too too broad a niche. Uh, you know, which it says stick to it, stick to a niche. Um, like even with a directory, you've got the business, and then even allowing them to publish content. Now, if you've got loads of different sort of categories, publishing that content may actually harm it mm. because you could have a car dealer 
you could have a freaking chiropractor. You, then you could have a pet sitter. How are those categories in that side going to actually even work? Like articles. Mm. And then the other flip side is you could allow people to offer events. Like then you could go down the road of, um, uh, you know, like uh, what's that event, the free event, look, ticket, ticket, no, no. Oh, God, what's it called? You know, you can allow the, the business, if they've got an event coming up, then they log into their account and they pop an event on and it actually pops up going events in your local area. Um, but then again, same again, like then all of a sudden you've got articles or random things on, on the blog section, then you've got events, then you've got like, mm. well, so long as it's local to a certain area, I suppose you would argue that that's the, yes, thing. yeah. But then you would need to stick to that area because yeah, sure. Then you could like, you know, it would be, it would be dog sitters in dog sitters you know uh, articles from your local dog sitters in whatever helpful tips events for dog sitters like i get that but the minute you start branching that yeah mm -hmm. it's, build it have a look do it <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like, let, let, you know, at the end of the day, if you if you're playing it yourself, you're doing a plug and play CMS. What's it? It's it's your time. It's your time. Uh, as long as you you're not backing your mortgage on your house on it, you know, it's your time. And you know, just do it. Yeah. Don't, See how it works. Yeah. Don't bet your house on it. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. But literally, it's a bit of hosting a year, um, and and yeah fine um but don't bet your house on something like that yeah yeah i think it's i think it would make sense to start small concentrated manageable and that you keep an overview of everything i think that would be the important thing um don't try to spread yourself everywhere or try to do all sorts of things at the same time you know, it, it could well be that this that this is never intended to be huge. You know, may, maybe Liz has got some um, some hobby um, that is specialised, and she wants to get wants to find more people who are involved in this. Wants to get more people involved in it, and it's just a little um, a little let's support my hobby project. I don't know. This doesn't say, but yeah. we've been kind of a, getting the feeling that this is going to be something big, or the ambition is to, that it should be something big, but maybe it isn't. Yeah, I think the problem is that the landscape has changed certainly over the past mm -hmm. ten years, and now that a lot of things that you mentioned are done on social media, and there is, in a sense um no space yeah that kind of activity i mean if you are interested in certain crafts or hobbies you know it is reinventing the wheel a bit it but, is yeah um there's this thing called google as well yeah so i think the environment has changed i think that uh, when you know, when i started building hobby sites i did have a few directories and that was um, history stuff. So um, I linked to resources available at different institutions and so on and so forth. And that was sort of around the time Google Books started, I think. And you know that attracted quite a lot of traffic then. But now if I were to do it, you know, it just wouldn't make any sense. It was curated. Um, you know, I had a good few hundred resources that I sort of validated and checked and all of that, usually hosted on academic institutions. And that did very well um, in search. But I just can't see that happening now because Google will 
point straight to the resource that people are looking for. And there are um, lots of resources already that do something similar. And that could be um, bibliographical references, etc. That it's not it's not something that is viable now. And I think it's going to be very difficult to find a job or even even a geographical space to do it nowadays. Starting now, I think is really going to be tough. I think that's the I think that's what we are trying to do in a sense is to disabuse any notion that it's going to be easy. Okay. Right. When I click this button, I think it's going to tell me that it's uh, what um, um, what's what's me time. Um, and those guys will shut up for another <laughs> one. <laughs> God, they do go on. Oh, I think it's great. I, I really do. <laughs> I, I, I just think it's fantastic. Well, hopefully we give some people things to think about because obviously yeah. we're, we're also still showing like mm. yeah it's it's good to have one's thoughts prodded by others yeah it also helps us figure shit out that we're not entirely sure of you know mm -hmm. The more we know, less sure we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's always what if. Mm. <laughs> it depends. Um, okay. Um, look, before we go, I must thank the people who answer questions through the week uh, on the WCA Questions Facebook group. and. Uh, make it such, such a, a valuable resource, um, especially you guys uh, turning up every week and uh, um, yeah, it, it, it requires dedication and, and it's really, really appreciated. All right, and um, Tim Kappa, Masataki Waza, Andy Wigglesworth, David Razam, and I think Richard Hearn will be out there lurking about somewhere. Um, anyway, um, uh, we'll uh, sign off now until next week. Um, let me see.